Now then, let's take the viewpoint of another person on this topic, though not in this room. Well, corruption has become a system in governance in the country. And to fight corruption, you must have to encounter a lot of problems. The corrupt people are well fortified, they're highly placed people, and when you want to fight them, you must be sure that you are prepared for a real struggle. And I think as a soldier, a retired soldier, uh, Buhari is doing fairly well. Have a regard to the fact that the anti-corruption forces, the corruption forces are very well fortified and are very well strong. But so far, so good. But it could be better. It could be better. Wrong with uh, selecting who you want to make examples. I know there are at least three, four lawyers on this panel. They might not agree with me, but I think I'll enter uh, a mea culpa uh, for uh, President Buhari. You can't try all the criminals at one fell swoop. So they must do some selection. Those with maximum nuisance value. I mean, I'm talking of those politically exposed criminals. They should be dealt with. I'm on record as having criticized the government for not having a strategy of anti-corruption. That what they are doing amounts to mere tactics. But in a country like China, in a country, somebody mentioned Lee Kuan Yew, uh, the Oriental attitude, Hong Kong, uh, the ways and means uh, were used uh, to push uh, corruption out of the political arena. Are we prepared to pay the price? Are we prepared to s execute politically corrupt people, firing squad? I think the tolerance leveled by Nigerians is so elastic <coughs> that uh, they will just laugh it off as another unfortunate... But, but Professor, if you, if you look at some of the facts uh, being put out by the government, they said they have had recoveries amounting to about 7.8 billion naira and about 378 million US dollars, 27,000 uh, uh, pounds in recoveries from public officials targeted by uh, whistleblowers. Isn't that some efforts being made on the issues of anti-corruption? No, as I said, I said I was going to enter some alibi uh, for the Buhari government that they are fighting uh, a war, but the war will not end by just one battle. There will be several battles. In other words, uh, maybe they have to make sure that they pursue those who have been accused of corruption uh, to the bitter end by securing convictions. Because what Nigerians are angry about is lack of conviction. And it's not the fault of the government. And lawyers don't talk for free. They are mobilized to defend accused persons. And the lawyers also exploit all the loopholes in the legal system to prolong uh, the trial. But Some who, who accused persons will feign sickness and enter into theatrics. <laughs> so, you know, all sort of things can happen in a trial. Professor but I'm Anthony. saying the government must be decisive. Either get the law reformed so that the conviction at uh, this penalty uh, for public corruption uh, it's made more drastic. I don't want to say draconian. But I'm saying that we have to show effort by the government to deal with uh, accused persons. I had somebody mention uh, the former secretary to the government and what have you. Uh, they will still have their day in court. I want to believe. So really, we should not really, uh, like somebody said, uh, throw away the baby with the bath water. It's, uh, it's a difficult task. And I remember that uh, President Buhari tried three times to become president. Uh, the fourth time, it was, I don't want to go into how he became president. But now those who made sure he became president, they believed that he was ramrod incorruptible and that he's the most suited person to contain the ogre. Of corruption. All right, uh, Professor, maybe if you look at the screen, uh, uh, what is being displayed and some of the facts that we've gotten from the EFCC, for example, it looks to me that from what we have here, 2016, we've had the highest convictions uh, from 2012 to 87, 
2011-67. Up until 2016, we have 194 uh, convictions. Dr. Eze Kwesili, good enough for you? Well, it, I wouldn't argue with their data because I don't have any counterfactual uh, to, to offer. Um, I think that the, the key point that the prof was making is the matter of, you know, the big fish. Um, usually in an anti-corruption effort, uh, people sort of think that the small fishes are easy to fry, but that the big ones are much more difficult. And so in terms of um, achieving conviction, of especially the politically exposed uh, 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 um, culprits in corruption, I think that the EFCC has a lot of work yet to do. But as he did say, the judiciary, we need to start calling out the judiciary in this mm. country. All right. Uh, let, let's use that opportunity question. to fly to Abuja. Yes, as uh, a <laughs> practicing legal practitioner, yeah. talking about former federal lawmaker West Dahosa, what are your thoughts on the body language of the judiciary to handling uh, these cases of corruption? Uh, the argument has been that we have the electoral law cases with limits when we talk about tribunals, but then when it comes to corruption cases, we're looking at years. We haven't seen... A lot of convictions, some have argued. Well, I have to let you know that um, part of the demonstration of political will will be the creation of proper institutions uh, for fighting corruption. And one of such will really be uh, the specialization of courts. I do know that one or two states like Lagos State may have designated like two, three courts for that, but that's not enough. You will find that once corruption cases are not dealt with by specialized courts, you are going to find series of adjournments, series of theatrics, and all sort of things to uh, delay those trials and uh, uh, diminish the impetus of the fight. So that's a big problem, and that, that will require some statutory review and uh, preferably some promulgation of new laws in that direction. You disagree? Fundamentals. Uh, uh, you know, I, I am not one for special designation of courts. Every court's jurisdiction on the matter ought to be able to exercise jurisdiction. The idea that we have to start creating corruption tribunals in this, at this time in the 21st century is disreputable, quite honestly. It's and not, it's not, part, it's not it's practice part of, of the problem that we've got. So what are you going to do? You create a special court for rape. You create a special court for murder. You create a special court for corruption. How many special courts are you going to create? Nigeria is so, we are so messed up as a country and as a people that we think military solutions offer a pathway out of everything. And I, I like to think that we can do much better than this. So what happens if I go to court like my brother, Wobi Kesini Advocate, has done and buy a judge, right? And the judge... <laughs> That's uh, a very collects, big allegation. This, no, 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 he's been convicted. <laughs> so I can say it openly. He's convicted and he's serving jail time, right? Senior advocate of Nigeria, and he buys a judge for less than one million naira, and um, then the judge is. What happens? I then move the judge to a special court. That's laughable, with all due respect. But he's talking but, 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 about but, but, something let, of the let, institution let, being the judiciary. We don't need special anti corruption courts. One. Number two, on a technical point, even if you had to do that, it's an administrative thing. A judge can designate it, a chief judge. A chief justice, as the case may be, can designate it. But I fundamentally contest the idea that at this time in the 21st century, we should be talking about special tribunals or special courts for corruption. Professor, That's just Professor not Akin on. Ibadi, 